we found that MPD and the city of Minneapolis engages in a pattern or practice of using excessive force, unlawfully discriminating against black and Native American people in enforcement activities, violating the rights of people engaged in protected speech, and discriminating against people with behavioral disabilities and responding to them when responding to them in crisis. I will discuss each finding in somewhat greater detail. First, we found that the Minneapolis Police Department routinely uses excessive force, often when no force is necessary, including unjust deadly force and unreasonable use of tasers. MPD officers discharge firearms at people without assessing whether the person presents any threat, let alone a threat that would justify deadly force. For example, in 2017, an MPD officer shot and killed an unarmed woman who he said had, quote, spooked him when she approached his squad car. The woman had called 911, 911, sorry, to report a possible sexual assault in a nearby alley. We also found that MPD officers routinely disregard the safety of people in their custody. Our review found numerous incidents in which MPD officers responded to a person's statement that they could not breathe with the version of, you can breathe, you're talking right now. We also found that MPD officers failed to intervene to prevent unreasonable use of force by other officers. Indeed, as outlined in our report, years before he killed George Floyd, Derek Chauvin used excessive force on other occasions in which multiple MPD officers stood by and did not stop him. Second, we found that MPD unlawfully discriminates against black and Native American people in its enforcement activities, including the use of force following stops. Based on our review of the data, MPD officers stop, search, and then for use force against people who are black and Native American at disproportionate rates. The data showed, for example, that MPD stopped black and Native American people nearly six times more often than white people in situations that did not result in arrest or citation, given their shares of the population. We found several incidents in which MPD officers were not held accountable for racist conduct until there was a public outcry. For example, after MPD officers stopped a car carrying four Somali-American teens, one officer told the teens, quote, do you remember what happened in Black Hawk Down when we killed a bunch of your folk? I'm proud of that. We didn't finish the job over there. If we had, you guys wouldn't be over here right now. As everybody, everyone no doubt knows, this is a reference to the 1990s raid by American Special Forces in Mogadishu. Such conduct is deeply disturbing, and it erodes the community's trust in law enforcement. Third, we found that MPD violates the rights of people engaged in protected speech, including by retaliating against protesters as well as members of the press. For example, on May 30th, 2020, MPD officers encountered journalists who were sheltering at a gas station. One officer approached a journalist who was filming while holding up his press credential and shouting, I'm press. The officer forcefully, pu forcefully pushed the journalist's head to the pavement, and when the officer and when the journalist held up his press credential again, an MPD sergeant pepper sprayed him in the face and walked away. Fourth, we found that MPD, along with the city, discriminates against people with behavioral health disabilities when responding to calls for assistance. Assistant Attorney General Clark will discuss these findings in further detail. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.